What are we gonna do now? Welcome to Beyond the Strange Explosion Network's Life is Strange 2 After Show. Each episode of Life is Strange 2, we are getting together to discuss what happens and talk about where we think the series could go next. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me as always, Nicholas Pryor. Yes, that's me. That Let's is... hope the series can dig itself out of the hole it's put itself in. I'll do. We're off to a good start. All right, so let's let's jump into it then. Uh, so the latest episode, of course, episode four, Faith. Um, I, I think I can easily say that for episode one, two, and three, we were all pretty positive, uh, above positive. I think above, you know. Two, the, two, two was difficult. But still, you weren't like, this isn't. Oh, I didn't hate it. No, not at all. Hmm. But. And you really enjoyed the last one? Yeah, well, the last one was we, good. We, we both really dug into that. So episode three, uh, four, Faith, what are your overall thoughts on this penultimate episode? Even though it was short, I just couldn't wait for it to be over. Really? Yeah. I feel like I have blunt force trauma for how fucking unsubtle the whole thing was. In what fashion? It was just, I understand they're trying to push a message, I guess, which is understandable and it's a good message, but it's just very, hits you over the head with it. Again and again. Do you mean with like informs to like, cause I guess there's, there's two main things in this episode that w- would, could be deemed as like beat you over the head ish, the racism stuff or like the religion is bad. <laughs> like which Both really. Like it's just, <laughs> we've already done the racism thing again. Like I get you trying to reinforce that. It's just, I don't know. I just feel like it could be done not as blunt, mm. I guess. I, I guess yeah. that, that's a criticism I've seen a lot of people have for this season in general, so. Yeah, I, I, I comparing episode four of season one to episode four of this one, it just yeah, doesn't hold a lot at all, in my opinion. Hmm. This, uh, it's a, that's a, the season one versus season two discussion is probably something worth having when we t- get to the next, mm. next episode, of course, I think. But, like, looking at them, like, this it's it's kind of apples to oranges to me in like oh yeah in in good and bad ways because you're like i wish they did more of this but at the same time i'm glad they didn't like stick to a formula type thing or whatever so there's definitely ups and downs i can agree with between both seasons but i I enjoy how i can look at season one even now being like the the way the trajectory that season one was going by the time it got to its penultimate episode and the, the the trajectory this is on and like the way they've done everything not a they didn't copy the same sort of emotional flow yeah. at all they're kind of just doing their own thing and in a lot of ways this season especially by the time we get to this episode i'm just kind of like looking back on the all four episodes i'm like it's weird how every episode is somewhat its own contained story like obviously yeah. it's, it's big thing but there's a lot less continuity yeah it's, it's hard to get attached yeah like there's always yeah. big time jumps and uh different themes and different characters and i think that's obviously part of the like the the road trip theme of the yeah. season is to always have new characters and new things happening on whatever else. Whereas the first season was obviously centered one town, one school, same characters, entire thing. Yeah. Um, and I definitely feel like, it, of course, if, if you'd rather just focus on a core group of characters and get to know them, the season one works a lot better that way. But at the same time, I'm like, it, I mean, I understand it, it's, it is a road trip. Like, you, Oh yeah. I, I understand how each, but it's, it's ups and downs, ups and downs, swings, swings and roundabouts as they, as they say. Um, one other thing is Sean's voice acting is getting to the point of unbearable <laughs> for me. You think so? Yeah, I just, the more and more time I spend with it, the worse and worse it's getting with for me. I, w- I will say that this episode, I just found, I, I would say this is the worst episode. Oh, I, easily, I, yeah. I wouldn't say that I didn't enjoy it because I, I've enjoyed the entirety of this season. Um... And like, this is just still part of the, the same continuing story. But like, if I had to rank the episodes, this is probably going to end up at the bottom just because it's, it, it was just the most linear in a lot of ways. Like the, there was like really no point. Yeah, it's of- real straightforward. Like a good chunk of the episode, you're stuck in a hospital room and can't do anything. Yes. It's, it's just very, very linear, especially once you come off the last week's episode, which gave you a lot of chance to explore and interact with different characters and whatever else. And I think when we, by the time we get to the end of the season, I think the last week, the episode three will probably be the most loved because it kind of gave you 
people more of that season one vibe of like, yeah. here's a core group of like young adult yeah. teen characters and you all interact with them and blah, 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 blah. So it definitely felt like more season one ish. And that's probably what yeah. people are going to go for. But I understand, but the entire time playing last, the last episode, you knew it wasn't going to last forever. So no, no, I feel like that one more than any other gave you something to be attached to, especially if Daniel and Sean, the relationship between them two isn't as strong. You don't feel as strongly about it as other people might. Hmm. I'll say as much as I, th- I think this episode just like structure wise is, is the worst and stuff. I definitely, by the time I got to the end, I did like what they've done between the brothers though. I, I, or the family in general, and we're going, to, we're going to discuss this point by point in a minute, of course, yeah. and we'll break down some more stuff. But I'd say my, my if my thing I liked the most about this episode was definitely the mother stuff and the Daniel stuff and Sean overcoming this this big thing to, to to get Daniel back and all this sort of stuff. So the family dynamic stuff, I really enjoy it. I can see that some people really hate it, but we'll discuss, of course, the mother when we get to her yeah. because she's quite an interesting character. Uh, so let's jump into it. So obviously the show... The show, the season, <laughs> this episode, whatever. Uh, so it wakes up Sean awaking in hospital at the start of this chapter, two months after the end of the last chapter. And Sean has certainly lost an eye. I, <laughs> now, of course, we last episode, we um, we was like, holy shit, are they going <laughs> to, are they actually going to do that? And then when yeah. they sh- they showed the trailer at, what was it? Gamescom? Yeah, game when they showed the trailer at Gamescom, yeah. the teaser for it, I was like, holy shit, they're actually going there. Like, it was so funny just thinking about it. I t- couldn't remember if this was a thing that was optional or not. I think it, I think we figured out it kind of just happens. Yeah. No matter what, in some form yeah. of way. Like, if you get blown away, even if you're out, like, leave, I think, or something, like, yeah. debris outside will get you. Like, uh, I think it's happening in one fashion or another. Um, so, inside the hospital room, you can interact with a bunch of stuff. Uh, like drawings and uh, yeah. letters. Oh, my and... death! My death perception sucks. I can't draw anymore. But yes, I just pump out all these artwork the yeah. same as I always have been doing. Yeah, go for it. Um, so but Sean meets Joey Peterson in here, uh, a nurse who was nice to him and helps him uh, teach him how to treat his treat his eye. Sean also then deals with FBI agent Marina Elena Flores, who is on Flores, the yeah. Flores, who was on the case of the brothers. Uh, and has been unsuccessful in tracking down Daniel. Two months unsuccessful for FBI yeah. doing a fucking great job. Uh, yeah, it's a fucking awful, <laughs> job. awful job. Um, and looking for her files, you can find out information about the uh, the remainder of the kids uh, and what happened to them and where they ended up um, and these sorts of things. And of course, uh, different people will also be in the hospital dependent on decisions you made in the previous episode, yep. depending on who died, who lived. Like you could have both... Uh, Oh, what's the brother's name? I can't remember. the the brother The brother and then the the, the leader of the the drug group or whatever. Both of those people could be in the hospital in some ways. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or they could both not be there, or one or the other could be there, so on and so forth. But yeah, there's. I would say it, it's like I liked Joey. Joey seemed like a nice dude. I kinda, yeah. I kind of like the one scene that him and Sean have together where he's like teaching him how to. To, to fix his eye and these yeah. sorts of things. That was cool. I like how the the this episode starts here because, of course, it's something of a shock value factor. Like, two months later, here he is in a hospital bed under, like, FBI watch, fucking lost an eye. It's, like, very, like, shit just went from 10 to oh, 11. Yeah. Like, Hopeless situation. <laughs> yeah, like, well up shit creek now. But overall, like, the hospital scene here at the start is just a lot of you could get through it very fast by not interacting with anything or if you don't really care about looking at the uh, extra files and stuff. I mean, I, I click for everything, but so did I, there's nothing mind blowing, I guess. The one, one thing that I didn't know was I, it didn't happen for me, but I've read some other people that even if, um, captain spirit got hit by the car, he doesn't die. It just says he ends up in a cast or something. Oh, okay. Well then, so, yeah. so they don't kill the little kid. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Thank God. Not even that. off screen. <laughs> Not even off screen. Yeah, I, th- oh, I think in mine there was something. Uh, was it? Uh, like saying about come visit soon, or like yeah. there was a ladder or something from him, like saying come visit, blah blah blah. blah. Hopefully you can work it out, blah blah blah. Um, yeah. Also, I had a letter from uh, the grandparents. The grandparents, and then there was another one from Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy, yes. Yeah. And she's like, hope everything's well, blah blah blah. Try not to die in jail yeah. or whatever yeah hope we swim naked again someday. yeah hope we, one day we can <laughs> swim naked again uh yeah so and then so following on from the the daytime scene at the hospital eventually you go to the 
uh, the nighttime scene, the escape section of the hospital thing. Uh, so when Sean gets his diary back from Joey, which Joey, I guess, steals from the FBI. Yeah, it's so strange. (laughs) I don't know where he got that. Makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know where he got that, but somehow he did. Um, And inside there's a secret message in there from Jacob who tells him he's taken Daniel to Haven Point. Like he's left a secret message in there. And A, I was like, you tell me the FBI fucking... Yeah, missed all that. (laughs) The FBI scoped through this diary and they're like, none of this means anything of note to us. <laughs> yeah. Daniel picks it up. Uh, Sean gets it back for two seconds. He's like, I know where he's, I know literally the exact location to go to find my brother or something. I think, I think that goes to another point of my, I guess, negativity towards the season in general is that it's trying to do something on a grander scope than I guess what they're capable of telling in a way. Yeah. Well, I guess like the first season, Obviously, by the time you get to the end, the, the idea of an entire town being destroyed is pretty fucking grand. But, yeah. but the overall core story was basically about teenage characters and their relationships yeah. with one another and, and dealing with, like, uh, depression and all these, like, yeah. large themes, but within a very small uh, yeah. scope. Focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas this is trying to deal with a lot of very big themes um, to do with family uh dealing with yeah. if you had superpowers racism in america yeah. uh, religion all yeah. oh, like drugs like it's it's tackling a lot of yeah, they're taking on too much at once they're taking on a lot of really big things and each episode somewhat tackles another big theme yeah if you, if you kind of look at each one somewhat it's theme of the week yeah theme of the week stuff for what's gone yeah and i, I would say they never particularly have time to focus on flesh it flesh out, out yeah. one yeah but it's it's kind of like the brothers are just yeah w- walking through this this thing, um, so uh oh I, f- I quickly forgot to go over the the choices you could make in the the daytime section actually so you can you pass the vision tests yep you passed one of the tests which is what I got or you failed both of the vision tests I passed both but in the second one I only got the pen once oh. See, I could, I could not get the second one at all. I missed by oh, okay. what seemed like 10 miles every single fucking time. Um, <laughs> you told Agent Flor- Flores the robbery was Finn's idea, which is what I did. That, so it, did I. that it was your idea or that it was everybody's idea. Yeah, I was pretty quick to chuck Finn under the bus because I was like, yeah. fuck that dude. It made sense for me because Finn was dead in mine. But now that I think about it, I can understand why, if you had an attachment with that character, why you didn't want to throw him under the bus. Yeah, I didn't have any attachment to him. He was, no, he's no. in the hospital. He's a shitbag. He's yeah. still in the hospital alive in mine. And um, there's an opportunity to talk to him later. And I just don't. So I, I dobbed him in. Didn't even bother telling him I dobbed him. Get fucked, Finn. So at what, at what point do you get a chance to talk to him? On the escape, on the way down, the the whatever you call it, the construction stuff. Oh, okay. When you go past the window, There's an open window okay, yeah. and you can see him at some yeah. point. For me, I only got to see the drug dealer dude, Merrill. Merrill, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah. And I think there's an opportunity for them both to be in the hospital alive. Yeah. I didn't get an opportunity to speak to Merrill, though. Mm. So. Um, yeah. So then when the escape, you have, from what I can gather, there's a bunch of different ways to break out of your somewhat prison cell here. Um, yeah. I ended up just, uh, snapping the window lock with, uh, something I break off from the bathroom or whatever. Like, I, I, oh, okay. Yeah. I broke off like a, hand, like one of those safety handle things in the bathroom yeah, and kind yeah, of use that to shoot, to break the lock in the window. And then I snuck out the window, snuck into the adjacent room to where he needs to get his bag and then run quickly across the hallway, blah, blah, blah. Now I could gather, obviously there's some way to knock out the guard or do all these yeah. other things, but how do you go about it? So I knocked out the guard. You can pull the curtain over, take the thing off the bathroom wall and like make a fake body in the bed and then call out for help saying you're like a migraine and you need an uh, aspirin or whatever and he comes in and then you bash him over the head with that. See, I put the thing in the bed, fake body. Yeah. I closed the curtain. I knocked yeah. on the window. I said, oh, I need some aspirin. And he, he just went... I'm yeah, not a fucking you do doctor, that, help and yourself. Then you, I did that and he didn't come and then I walked behind the curtain and it gave me another option to call out to him. Uh, so at that point I was like, yeah. fuck you, this isn't going to work then. So Yeah, I tried to get out of the window, but the lock was there and I didn't even think that you'd be able to use that gigantic fucking pipe to break that little lock. Just hits it somehow. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it works. 
Um, then obviously with Joey, I imagine you use the nurse call button and either get in convince yeah, I'd, him or I'd attack say him. The idea of anyone out there sickens me. I, I just <laughs> figured even if you did call him in and bash him over the head, how are you getting past the guard? Who, who would do that to nice Joey though? Yeah. Who, who, what's Racist. The, what's the, <laughs> what sadistic <laughs> son of a bitch meets that character Joey? It's like, he's the nicest person, person we've met in this, in this whole episode so far. He's obviously looking out for Sean and he's going to fucking mm. come in and do that to him. Come on. What are you playing, yeah. Sean? That's if you're playing Sean as a real fucking prick. Um, yeah, so however way you get out, Sean gathers Gav his stuff. Of course, as we just mentioned, there are opportunities, depending on what characters are alive from the previous episode, and interact with those. Uh, none of us knows know how they go because none of us did that. Did no. that. But as I said, I could have interacted with Finn, but I was like, fuck him. Um, and then you go down and you hotwire a car and... Off yeah, you go. Yeah. Off you go into the sunset or the nighttime, I guess, or the, the, the moonlight. And uh, that's when the, the it takes this long for the opening tile to appear. Yeah. So, like, I kind of forgot because it was so far into it. And then when it appeared, I was like, oh, yeah, that hadn't happened yet. Hey, like, <laughs> things have taken such a long time. Uh, so, yeah, the, the next thing that we get is Sean's on the road for a while and he eventually pulls over and he stops at just a big abandoned, yeah. like, it just seems like the side of the road. Seems know? like the side of a road. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and he th- he's ha- he has a cigarette, of course, and he chills out or whatever. And um, then he goes back in. He can investigate some items, and then you you kind of have this dream uh, with your dead dad in a car. Yeah, so he, which has already done been done before. Yeah, so he keeps dreaming about his dad, though. I guess, and it, or his brothers in this one as well. Like his his dad's out. I guess it was a it was a memory, is what I understood it from. Yeah. So it seemed like a real memory that was kind of, of course. But then his dad's like talking to him. Yeah. Like, current time like weird yeah. memory type stuff like sean's driving his car back with his dad and he's on his l plates and then daniel rings up and he's like trying not to catch the car and all these sorts of things and then uh, his dad's like suddenly telling him that it's time to grow up son and like yeah. you know you got to take charge it was like i i didn't mind i thought it was a cool as i said like ever since season one up oh, season one, episode one i think dad's great it's i think best thing about the dad in this game is the fact that straight away you kind of love him and then yeah. that's the reason it works when he dies because you're like, fuck, he seemed like a cool dude. He seemed like such a yeah. nice uh, person. Every time he shows back up, soon. it's like, yeah, he's such a nice person. It's like, it's horrible that he got fucking killed. Um, but then when you get woken, you get awoken by these two hicks out here who are claiming that it's their land. I mean, it could be, I guess, for all, yeah. I, for all I know. But either way, it's not that big of a deal. It's a simple mistake. Anyone else would just be like, oh, yeah move along please sir or whatever but of yeah. course they're two fucking backwards ass hicks out here and there's a mexican dude sleeping in a car and of course they jump to straight away j- jokes and uh racism and i only feel like one of them was i thought the other one was just been dragged along by his mate oh yeah, that's yeah that's a good point yeah so yeah the one dude at the back is like who, who i guess yeah, seemed like, like his him brother alone. or something like that yeah I guess. maybe yeah and he yeah he, he is like just let him let him go he said that he wasn't he's not doing anything just leave him blah 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 but yeah it definitely seems like the older yeah. brother i guess or whatever it is um the old the, the one dude who's just constantly the brother ha- father yeah who's just con- <laughs> just constantly <laughs> hassling uh him and makes a lot of uh inappropriate racist yeah, jokes uh, and, yeah. and at one point one of the options you have here is uh to he asks you to sing a song on all this sort of stuff and yeah uh, you can choose to do that or not so it, th- this scene i gather from what you're saying before you you didn't particularly like this because you felt like it was too beating over the head <sighs> yeah i don't know like i don't know how to rationalize my complaint like yeah it it gave across the message of racist fucks fucking with him but it's also very blunt in the way it does it as well like i don't know how else they could have done it either it's yeah see my thing is when you say that i'm like they haven't really done this since like like we since the um the episode one yeah petrol station yeah Yeah. I, i i guess you could be like it I think in the bigger scheme of things, they haven't like constantly every episode beat you over the head with this. And it's like, yeah. here's a dude sleeping out there and you could be like, well, what are the chances I'd, people I'd, would find him? It's like obviously slim, but at the same time, it's it's not like a super unbelievable scenario that two hicks out yeah. there would do such a thing if they caught someone. I guess in a way, I think it's more, none of the characters in this episode feel like they had much depth other than 
Jacob and the mother mm. where they were all stereot like playing stereotypes in a way. Well, this this episode more than any other, and the reason that it's kind of paced so weird is because it's basically just Sean the entire episode. Yeah. Primarily. This episode is really just Sean the episode until the mother shows up. But even then it's like that's in the, the last like quarter there or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Um and every episode prior to this has always been Sean and Daniel as your two main characters. And this yeah. one's just like Sean. And not only is it just focused on Sean, it's a, a really narrow focused episode on Sean where it it's not much about player choice. It's about putting Sean just through hell and back. Yeah. And I understand that's the point to build his character and like to, to, to show what he'll go through to, to like save his brother and stuff. And I, I, I like how it works on that angle, but from like a gameplay front or like the way these episodes have previously been set up when there's not much choice or chance to explore yeah, anything. Th- th- there's definitely less game in this one as opposed to all the others. Yes. Like every other, yeah. uh, in every other life is strange. You kind of get used to at least having a chance at some point to, explore a little bit and the most yeah. ex- exploration or have ex- some sort of decision over the outcome uh, yeah but this one just really feels like it doesn't matter what version of, it doesn't matter if you play sean like an asshole or like the best guy yeah. ever like whatever either way your sh- version of sean is just going to get put through hell and back throughout yeah. this episode like and it literally starts from these two dudes here uh well yeah. i mean wakes up a hospital two fucking racist dudes we're about to get you know next scene he's fucking being dragged through sun yeah. nearly dies all this sort of stuff but the other thing i'll say for this this scene here that i think works within the context of this episode is because of what happens after this um so because what happens after this is when you get to the sun scene uh what he's walking down the road you have a truck pull over and yeah. you can choose to get in that truck or not but the thing yeah. is that when you get into it sean obviously because he just had two dudes fucking harass him yeah. and beat up uh, absolute pricks out there he sees another white fucking trucky dude and he's obviously yeah. like stereotyping that dude somewhat and yeah. being like he's gonna treat me like shit but yeah. he doesn't he's just like nah. a nice dude who drops him off so i think i think because it's good that they have these two racist well at least the one really racist fucking dude yeah. out here give him shit and then a the scene following that they say you know it's not it's not all black and white you know he, he's a, yeah. he's someone that sean thinks is the exact same character but it's actually just a nice dude so it's like yeah, yeah. there are messed up people out there but also he's a trucker dude who he thinks is messed up but he's not actually messed up so i think yeah i like how they put that in there to kind of counterbalance there and that's why i'd say it's not super over the head because i yeah. would say it is i would be agreeing and saying they're beating over the head with the message if the trucker dude was again was racist as well, some yeah. big racist dude but they yeah. purposely have him not be to kind of um, Since you put it that way, I, I, I think more of my negativity now that I think about it was my experience at the end as opposed to all of it now. Okay, the end. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, <laughs> so the, the couple of choices during the, the racist scene, though, uh, you broke Daniel's toy while you're trying to take it back from Ch- Chad, Chad, um, or you didn't try and get the toy back and didn't break it. I didn't try and get it back. No, me neither. No. I was like, why why risk yeah. doing anything here? It's not worth it. Um, you sang the spo- song in Spanish, you refused to sing and got beat up, or you weren't asked to sing at all. Um, I sang the song in Spanish because as, as much as it was kind of humiliating, I was just trying yeah. to do for my safety, obviously. Yeah, I refused. I wasn't taking it. And then, did you get beat up following that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How bad yeah, was the... Yeah, I... Gets a smackdown and then the friend goes, oh, the, the racist guy's friend gets in the car and goes, just get out of, like puts him back in the car and get out of here, just follow this road and go. Yeah, so I, there's, I'll tell you, what, watching the singing scene, it was, it's, I'd say it's hard to watch because yeah, they like, they have be. him sing in there for like a good 30 seconds and at the same time, he's like crying. You, you yeah. like see tears coming down his face and the guy's like laughing in his face as he's singing this very, um, this song and it's like, oh, this is, fucked up I'm, I, automatically yeah. after i made the decision i kind of regretted it but like <laughs> at the same time i was like i was doing it because i don't want to i don't want us to get yeah. killed sean like <laughs> what? i'm trying yeah. to protect you here um yeah so next so after all this either way sean escapes uh and of course you you run out of petrol and then um well they, they show the petrol meter hitting a- empty and yeah, then they cut to the next scene it's like he could have been walking for an hour six hours it doesn't yeah. really matter. Either way, he's been out here for long enough in the burning sun yeah. that he was very sunburned. He 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 looks like a roasted fucking uh, yeah. ch- chicken or something. Um, and this this scene, I think, as much as I can complain that the, the, see, 
I wouldn't have mind if this scene existed because obviously the scene doesn't give me much to play with yeah. or room to do. No. But I wouldn't have mind it so much if there was a, l- more openness in the following scenes in the episode. But there's just so many scenes that give you little no options of exploration yeah. or character interaction or anything like that yeah. that this it just feels like too many. But this could have worked fine. I think this scene alone as like an em- emotional scene does work for... Um, that's what I'm saying. He goes through hell and back, like literally from start to finish. Like he's here, he is walking along this fucking road. He could have died on this road, you know. Oh yeah, like quite easily. Could have very easily. Which, which goes to that choice whether you choose to get in the truck or not. I don't know how on earth he gets to the destination not getting in the truck. Yeah, I don't. I <laughs> I don't understand either. Like should have just. It, it can't have been that far. I guess like. No, you'd hope it wasn't that far. And like, well, I, I think the truck driver says, "Oh yeah, it's an hour down the road or something." Okay, so it, th- yeah. they're pushing the believability of that. But I guess if it's only an yeah. hour, then yeah, but it's still an hour in a truck going like fucking yeah, k's an hour. I guess. Yeah, and he he already looks pretty fucking dead as it yeah. is. Why doing this whole scene? Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's little. There's like one secret you can find here. There's like if you try and wander too far off the track, then Sean tells you to get back to the road because you'll like see a snake go past you. Yeah, or come across like that. a snake. Yeah, and he's like you better get back on the road. Um, one of the secrets you can find though is you see after you sit down under the um the billboard the, and do the yeah. drawing scene. Uh, up past that you can see this dingo fox thing. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Like coyote. Coyote. Yeah, thank you. It, yeah, yes. dead you see rabbit, a coyote yeah. like play with the dead rabbit thing and then you can walk over and look at that and be like, ooh. But then if you follow the coyote over to where it went into a hole, there's a skull there or something you can pick up and uh, okay. that's like one of the secrets or something like that. But other than that and the drawing thing, obviously there's not much no. uh, in this scene and it is just a, just a scene of look how far yeah. Sean's going. And the one choice here as was I've, as we've been going before, is either you get into Anton's truck and he reaches, drives you to Haven Point, or you didn't get in and walk somehow. Yeah. Uh, we both got into the, the truck, yeah. though, obviously. Um, however you get to the uh, Haven Point, though, you, can draw, you arrive in what I assume is like a two-street <laughs> backward yeah. middle of nowhere town. It seems like there's one street down here and there's another street up here, like like Cross trying street, to yeah. uh, above oh, it. Oh yeah, up on the hill, yeah. Up on the hill the where ones, they are. It's yeah. like the two street town or something like that. <laughs> um so Sean has dropped off at Haven Point Church and he investigates inside, finding his brother being used as a prophet of some sort, or the so- second coming of Christ. Uh things don't go the way he thought they would though when he tries to tell Daniel they're leaving and Daniel tells him he's not leaving. Lisbeth, the church's leader, seems to have uh mind washed Daniel somewhat, indoctrinating him into the position she wants to use him for. Soon, Sean is kicked out, uh, somewhat beaten up and then kicked out side of the church where he finds his mother who has turned up to help out her kids. So the at first, when we dropped off at the church, I was like, oh dear. Well, yeah. Mm. As soon as you... It's like, the kid's got superpowers. It's a fucking church. Especially, especially after all the shit you read about Jacob's past the previous episode, you know what kind of community this is. Yes. And I can't, as much as people can be like, oh, they're making these, they take three months because they're making them up as they go. They're yeah. not. They're, no. There's no way because the, all the stuff they set up with Jacob, which is in that episode, it's always weird. Like they, they let you investigate Jacob, learn about his little sister, have that whole yeah. conversation about his little sister and help him write the letter to her and all this sort of yeah. stuff. And you're like, is this just like character filler? Like, side stuff yeah well why would they wouldn't invest that much character development into someone that's just going to disappear the next yeah episode. well it's like uh, would you and i was like well, maybe they will but then obviously yeah. it, it's not because jacob turns up in this and the little sister yeah. becomes relevant um not only because sean obviously remembers just little like sister. cassidy and finn the episode before exactly they're sharp and yeah. yeah so they're they're all like character linking one by one and all these sorts yeah. of things but yeah um as soon as I get here, I was like, yeah, I, I, I kind of knew what to expect when you walked yeah. into the church because it's it's not a super unique uh, plot point for like a no. superhero to be treated as a, a god, obviously. I mean, er, er, every superhero, starting yeah. from superhero, there's lots of like superhero plots. Especially and- when um, Jacob gets shown uh, Finn's, uh, Daniel's powers and he's like, oh my God, this is, yeah. Yeah. And- yeah, how, uh, let's go on that. How how do you feel about Jacob bringing him here? Do you, are you like you little fucker, or did you like buy into his whole? I didn't. I didn't know what else to do. Kind of. <sighs> Towards the end, I believed he didn't know what else to do. But originally, I was like, "Why the fuck would you take him there?" Like, I knew what was 
they were going to treat him yeah. like he does. Yeah, I, I, I mean, at first I was like, why would he do that? Like, yeah. But by the end, you're like, especially, and we'll talk a little bit more about what. Especially you, as like a scared guy, and yeah. Like, what the and you find out some more stuff about him too, and like how bad's treating yeah. him. It's like for, for him to return to a place that he hates so much, he it must really just be like dire straits. Yeah. What else am I supposed to do with me and this kid? We're kind of on the run, yeah. so um, you kind of believe it. Uh, yeah, so the when you go inside, also, Lisbeth straight away, she just seems like a very kind of stereotypical crazy church leader. Pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty much as soon as she comes out, it's like, yeah, um, dressed Daniel up in this fucking, gave him the bowl cut and <laughs> whatever else. It's very like a lot of it is stuff I've seen a lot before, I guess, in different sorts yeah. of. Uh, I think that's my biggest issue that it's very. Copy paste. Yeah, I I wouldn't say they've done anything. No, fresh. There's, no, there's no there's no depth or life is, life is strange spin on it. No, not not for this. I'd say yeah. It's yeah. just like if you've watched enough, be it uh, comic booky type stuff that like deals with superhero and like the god complex for that stuff, or even just like a lot of horror movies that deal with like fucked up yeah, churches it, and ab- stuff, abductive people. And, yeah, yeah. There's it's like these sorts of characters have been done a lot. Yeah, um, in different degrees hypocritical and yeah. yeah what's good for me is not good for you yep. follow me yeah yep, yep. um so the one choice here before we go into the next scene i guess because there's not much of, we don't really need to discuss the mum the mum in this scene because no. she kind of just turns up i guess yeah. um the one choice it's you strange. have here is <laughs> the one choice you have here is you gave money to the church or you didn't give money to the church i have no idea why you would give money to the church oh no me neither the only thing, because I know when you pick one of the pins up, it says like free with every donation or something like that, in case you feel guilty for stealing. What? I guess. The pin is one of the secrets, right? One of the collectibles, which obviously yeah. is someone who cares about trophies and I'm playing this on PlayStation 4. Yeah. I, I'm getting all the collectibles, right? And I see the whole pin. I'm like, well, that's obviously a collectible. I'm no dummy. Yeah. But why would I could just, I picked it up and I took it. Why would I give them money? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, yeah, so this is obviously... It, but also, by the time you hit the church, it's like, okay, the episode's cold. Faith, faith it's all yeah. starting to make much sense. But also, it's like, I guess, a play on words because faith, church, but then also, like, faith, Daniel's faith in his brother, yeah. Sean's faith in his brother, uh, the family's faith in one another. I, I kind of like how it all somewhat yeah. works in together that way. Um, yeah, so after Sean gets kind of punched in the face and whatever else and uh, rescued by his mum, which, by the way... I was really excited because obviously we've been having different theories about his mum showing up and being a key part of but, this. But, uh, sorry, before we go ahead, like you have that reuniting with Daniel in the church. I, I, I didn't find it that believe. I, I don't know, believable, but how quickly he is to just dismiss Daniel, uh, Sean. What do you mean? Oh, d- like how? But what does that? He's yeah. been there for two months. I don't forget. Yeah, I guess so. I, yeah. I, I think I would I would be with you, like, in unbelief, like, not buying into how... Because that's what I'm saying. Indoctrinated is the word I would yeah. use for how he is. And I would not buy into that if it had been two weeks. But I think two months, it's a little kid. That is a long time for, like, an eight-year-old kid or whatever he is to be with a couple of people, you know? And I, I don't know. I just, I guess, as far as he knew, Sean was dead. Like, he was there on the ground. He's bleeding out. His yeah. eyes gone and... Well, yeah, he's I just sh- like shown up out of the blue. I, sh- I assume he must have thought he was dead, but yeah, yeah. It's like I think that's how old he is, isn't he? Isn't he like somewhere between eight and ten or something like that? Oh, he's like young. 10? I believe he's b- b- younger than ten. Yeah, so he's, he's quite young. That's what, yeah. So and it's yeah. like here are the first adults. Well, hold on. He had his grandparents, of course, but Sean was there. But here are the first. But even then, they didn't like treat him probably the way he would have wanted. Here are adults coming into his life saying, "You're special." You're 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 one of a kind. You you deserve so much more, Daniel. So, sorry, he's ten in this episode. Okay, ten, there you go. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's just I I think as because of course the previous episodes they also set up how like he's getting sick of everyone not treating him right, especially Sean yeah. with his powers and stuff. And these people, you can imagine what she's whispering into to his ear at night. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You're 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 so good. You're so powerful. You're so good. You're one of a kind. Oh my god, you're the, the best thing on the yeah. earth you're a special being you're a special like all these words of like really treating him like he's this little, little special boy and whatever else so yeah i think it would have definitely been playing into the type of uh mother slash father figure or whatever like character could come into his life is is what she is she's like kind of the perfect thing 
even though, I mean, she just tells him he loves him, <laughs> really, at the end of the day. I, I can agree with that also, but you see the way he's treated outside of that as well. Like you break into, like jumping ahead, like you break into the house and you see the room. What Daniel has to go through, the list of chores, he has to yeah. take an all sort of everything he loves out of his life as well. Like, and he hated all the rules and all that kind of stuff at his grandparents as well. Yeah, I guess, I guess it just evens out. So, like, if he's getting, he's getting all these people praising him in the church scene here when yeah. he raises up the, um, the, the, the cross or what, yeah. crucifix, yeah. And like, everyone's just like, pra- like praising him and stuff. I guess, like, when he's getting that sort of worship, which is ticking a, a, a box for him, um, I guess then all the other stuff kind of gets washed away, not yeah, in, in whatever else, so. yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm sticking to the word indoctrination because there's no way she's this woman's just fucked with oh, this yeah, small she's very manipulative, very manipulative lady. Um, yeah. So then we head, then we head to the motel where uh, Sean's mother has dropped you off and run off to, to get to some supplies and things. And you can investigate the room. You can investigate what's inside your mother's bag. Um, Sean has a shower, fixed up his, um, or gets an eye patch off his mother also in this whole thing here. Um, and then when your mum comes back, you do have a lengthy conversation with her and discuss it. You can discuss why she left Sean and um, why she's come back now. Uh, you can ask her if she feels sorry about the decision she's made um, and these sorts of things. Or you could play it very, uh, just shut the fuck up. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Fuck you. Go away. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you, yeah. you can play this. You can't fix this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like how they do give you the options to play this uh, different ways with Sean, given that you obviously know that he was abandoned at a young age of her and you know that he's upset about it, but it, it still lets you kind yeah. of play this out the way you want. But even when you're accepting, there's no, there's, they don't give you a really easy, it's okay, mum, I love you. They don't give you that yeah. option. Like even the no. option of being nice about it is still pretty much like, well, I'm open to listening to you, but like, I'm still angry. But I will yeah. say, well, I'll qu- quickly go over the room stuff. A, before she shows up, I like how you can put in a bag and find some fucking yeah, yeah, just go through everything. Some condoms in there, go, mum. Um, <laughs> um, and then you can also uh, you can ring up Jacob and be like, hey, Jacob, um, we'll meet up with you tomorrow or yeah. uh, whatever it is. That's kind of, kind of sets yeah. up the scenes after this and stuff. Um, but when she comes back and you jump into the conversation with her, you kind of I I think I really really like the way that she is written. I will say that she is a really complex character i i don't agree with what she's done but i don't think you have to agree with what she's done to like her to to think she's an interesting and uh well-written character yeah because that's that's where i like i don't agree with what she did um by leaving her just running off and leaving her kids yet at the same time i can understand the why she was explaining what she did and the reason that she did it you know, I guess it was like a no-win situation for her. Like, yeah, she could have stayed around, but she would have been miserable and a worse off parent than not being there at all. I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's like in, you, you can see, you can understand the decisions that she made, whether you agree with them or not. Yes, and I, I, I think that's actually as much as I, I. This is some the best writing in the episode. I think is this yeah. entire scene with him and his mother and the way they've they've written her as a character. I think is a really un- unique and well written uh, character because she is utterly flawed. Yet um, yeah. all of the the stuff she says, you can understand her her reasoning as much as you could disagree with it. And I think that is yeah. a, a, a true sign of a really well written um, character. And I also think she's obviously a character, a mother figure character that you. You don't really see in video games or movies or TV really at all. She's um, yeah, really, really flawed, but at the same time, really, really quite interesting. And um, the fact that she even comes back to, because uh, Jacob, the, the reason she comes back, they go over, of course, is that Jacob uh, contacts her somehow via, via her PO box or uh, whatever it is. She f- yeah, yeah. I think that um, he said Jacob contacted you because he contacted her because Daniel gave him the PO box, yeah, which I imagine he got from the letters that you find at um, the grandmother's place. Yes, yes, yeah. but they were just holding on to and yeah, they hadn't done anything with yeah. Um, so then she turns up, and, and it's like it's a sign. As much as she ran away back in the day, it's like well, she turned up now. 
you know. Yeah. And it's it's not to be like, well, you can, it's not to be like you can turn up at the last second and all yeah. your sins are washed Make away. Everything okay. Everything's yeah. okay. But it's like turning up is turning up. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. like it's it's it's. I, I think some things people should be never forgiven for. I'm, I'm, there's like a certainly obviously a line I'd say for the for certain things in life, but at the yeah. same time, like this is one of those things where I could. Like for her as a character, the fact that she's turned up now is like if I was Sean, yes, I would still be pissed, but at the same time it'd be hard not to be like try and move past it. Like what's yeah. let's let's live in the present a little bit. Like she's here now. I, I, I get yeah, yeah, she even though she's done what she's done, she's also making an effort to try and yes. make it right, I guess. Yes. Like that the whole saying of better late than never isn't always true, yeah. but sometimes nah. it's somewhat true and i feel like this is a like it's somewhat true like it is better than yeah. nothing like you're, you're here now i like how she talks to sean i like how she uh treats him as a adult and kind of just talks to him pretty straight up and she doesn't yeah. kind of treat him like a, a, a she doesn't treat she, him like yeah. a child and like bullshit bullshit her answers i like how um because it's one of the decisions as well like when she starts smoking you just like can have one of those and she's not like you're a child you can't smoke she's just like yeah. here you go like <laughs> at this point you've lost a fucking eye you're on the run from the cops you're like <laughs> your fucking brother's kidnapped by church what does giving you a cigarette really <laughs> gonna make a difference at this point so um yeah i, I really enjoyed it. i'd say this is my favorite uh this is my favorite scene of the whole episode all the he, he, the mother scene in the 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 motel here it was the yeah, most enjoyable. easily, yeah, easily stand out. Yeah. Um. So after you, you smoke a cigarette, make amends to your mother, or I guess if you play like a complete asshole, um, you go to bed eventually. However, however it ends up happening, I have no idea. I so I don't replay yeah. these things. I know some people do for shits and giggles. I never replay these things. But and the no. idea of playing this and being like a complete asshole and being like fuck you, go away, and I'm like, <laughs> what an awkward ending to this whole scene. But, um. The decisions you have here are you cut the conversation short with Karen. You were hard on Karen. By the way, Karen is the mother's name. I just keep referring to her as Sean's mother, but he always calls her Karen during the the thing because out of like somewhat spite, I guess, because he doesn't want to call her mum, just keeps calling her Karen. Um, Yeah. So you cut the conversation short with Karen. You were hard on Karen during the conversation or overall you tried to let Karen open up to you. I got the last one. I tried. Yeah. So did I. Yeah. Which on my ninety four percent of people did. It was come on, it's, it would be hard not to like. That's what I'm saying. I cannot imagine yeah. being such a. It, it, even if you feel that way towards her, I feel like just getting the most of your gameplay. You want to hear what she has to yeah, say. I'm like, does this whole scene turn into two minutes if you're just like, shut up, shut up, shut yeah. up, fuck off, <laughs> bed, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> you you turn into Daniel because <laughs> Daniel's like that towards you. Yeah, exactly. Um, you smoke to Siggy with Karen. You stayed outside while she smoked, or you didn't stay outside. Um, I smoked a, I smoked yeah. old ciggy with. I turned into a ciggy butt brain. Ciggy butt brain outside with her. Uh, you accepted Karen's help to clean your wound. You refused her help, or she didn't help offer. I refused to help. I accepted it. It, it wasn't like a fuck you, lady. It was more of a yeah. I'm good. You know, yeah. in my mind, it was just I don't need your help. Right. We, yeah. We've been talking. This has been a good conversation, Karen. I like the way it's going. Very good. Yeah. But we're not at the stage where you're helping yeah. clean my wound quite yeah, yet. You, you, you can't enter my body via yeah. my face yeah. yet. Just we're, yet. we're not quite at <laughs> I, I help stage yet. How does it play out if she does help you? Like, is it just like... I don't remember, to be honest with you. I think it just like fades away. I just fades away. Like okay. that. So yeah. nothing that's really... Yeah. Changes. It's it's more the choice than the outcome. Yeah, okay. uh, so yeah, next, next the next morning, uh, they all... Sean and Karen meet up with Jacob up on the the, the one of two the second street of this two the road, street town. the road above the, the church the road above <laughs> the church yeah uh, and Jacob says that he'll help them get Daniel out if he also helps them get his sister the out sister. because he thinks his sister is really sick and she is we see her at the start of it the time we get to church and she's outside coughing her cups up and whatever the fuck yeah. else um so she, she thinks that uh, Jacob says that he thinks his sister's really sick but that uh, the church lady isn't letting her go to hospital or anything yeah. like that. She's just kind of keeping her inside a cult. Uh, so the two, the two by- Which uh, d- doesn't make any sense, really. Why? Because even, I can understand if they're trying to make Daniel, if they're trying to make Daniel out to be some sort of like healer, like I can cure all your wounds and stuff like that, but he's not. He's just like lifting a cross up. No, I, like, I've like from a lot of the documentaries I've ever watched about like crazy cults like this and stuff, a lot of the time they don't let anyone- go to outside yeah. things for various different reasons. Like be it like we stick to our own. We don't 
like you don't yeah. go to government places like alone you know those sorts of things so yeah uh, it, it made sense to me like given of what i've seen uh yeah so then jacob and um sean sneak into the uh they sneak into the facility and they're trying to get this big back room the back to find which i've Hey. No fucking idea how you do it because either way you got to walk in front of people and there is no way that lady sitting on the chair smoking doesn't see two people fucking walk across her face behind the building she's sitting next to. I walked behind the building. Yeah, I walked behind the building, but you still got to walk in front of her to go past her to get behind it. Oh yeah, I guess uh, she she's sitting down at the chair smoking, looking towards the front of the compound. Yeah, but I guess like maybe you could just they could be like it's, it, off in the distance. Like, they could be anyone, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right, could be anyone. Um, yeah, so then you sneak into this back room in the back of the church and you uh, can look around. You can find Daniel's room in here. Yeah. You can find a bunch of uh, bonus material and files and these sorts of things. Um, you, you get the files that Jacob needs on his, his sister to help her, but also in here you can find some messed up information about uh, Jacob himself. You can find these files yeah. that written about him and explains that because he's um, gay that they were trying to basically conversion, conversion therapy. therapy him during the church and stuff. So um, that's what I was saying before. Like the, the idea that he would return to this after like, that's the reason he basically yeah. escaped in the first place. It definitely makes you feel like he literally had no choice and, like, yeah. there's no way he would come back here if he had any other choice, no. obviously. So, um, and then you, uh, what's his face comes into, I've got his name here somewhere, but I've already forgot. Nicholas. It. Nicholas? Oh, yeah. The, the big, tough, brute church dude, yeah. Nicholas. Yeah. The, 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 the leader and the fucking muscle, yeah. the same as the last episode. Yes. The leader and the muscle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the muscle, Nicholas, he eventually comes in. You have to hide and these sorts of things. And I, yeah. I, I, I there's literally it. only one place to hide. Yeah. I, that's the thing that got me. Cause I, I went into this cupboard first or the wardrobe or whatever it is yeah. when he comes in with all the files, with all the files and stuff. And I'm standing in there and nothing's happening for a couple of seconds. I'm like, am I supposed to do something else? And then I exit. I walk around yeah. the room. I'm like, there's nothing else to do here. So I just go back in no. and then Nicholas comes in and leaves eventually. I'm like, okay, that was a bit of a weird, I went in there originally and I saw all the files and I heard the mother say on the radio, I was just holding a bunch of files and I was like, oh no, he's going to go in here. This is the wrong place. But then I looked around and that was literally the only place I could go. Yeah. I, I couldn't see any other place either. Um, so then when you, uh, to get Nicholas to fuck off, uh, Sean's mother goes and lights an entire fucking church building on fire, <laughs> like off in the distance somewhere. Oh, is that it? Is that what happens? Because she asks, "Oh, I can distract him," and I tell her, "No, it'll be too dangerous." Oh. <laughs> so I was just in there, and then he puts the files away and he goes, "Oh, I'm hungry," and leaves the room. <laughs> okay, well, that's a lot less eventful because yeah, she yeah. she's like, "No, I'll don't worry, I'll cause a distraction," and then you hear suddenly Nicholas like runs outside, and you're obviously Jacob and Sean are like, what's going on? And then yeah. when the two of them head outside with the, the files, they need these sorts of things. You look up and there's this entire fucking giant building just on fucking fire. And then he's like, Jacob's like, your mom's a bit of a badass. And it's like, even <laughs> Sean's like, yeah, I, yeah <laughs> that's my mom. That's my mom. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the decisions in this scene, are you got Nicholas suspicious while sneaking into Haven point or Nicholas was unaware of your presence. Nicholas was unaware of my presence. Yeah, I was unaware of my presence. Yes, good job. Um, <laughs> you shared your money with Jacob or you didn't give any money to Jacob. I didn't give him any money. Neither did I because I felt like the other option was the more like heartfelt. Yeah, I I felt like I needed a medium. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I, I did. The, like there's nothing leading up to that choice that makes you go, oh, I should give him my money. Yes. What? I just felt if there's not like he even asked for money or goes, Oh, I won't be able to afford the treatment or anything like that. I feel like if there was a third option that was like, you can keep, uh, I'll, I'll give you a tiny amount of my money, Jacob. Or yeah. something. I probably would have clicked that, but the two options are fuck off or have all my money. It seemed. And I'm like, well, I'm not it giving was, him all my money. Was, um, <laughs> I think he's talking about her pneumonia or whatever he goes. Oh, I think the option is like along the lines of feeling sympathy towards him or give him your money. Yes. And I was like, well, <laughs> I need the money. <laughs> I feel bad, but like, yeah, I'm the star of this game and I need the, <laughs> I need the yeah, money. That's it. I need the money. I need my grappling hook to get over the wall. Yeah, exactly. Um, you got caught by Nicholas or you managed to hide from Nicholas? I managed to hide from Nicholas. 
Yeah, hide. I unless you're purposely trying to get caught, I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I don't it. know how you fucked it up. Yeah, even Jacob standing behind the door doesn't get found. Yeah. What? Yeah, I was like, how? He's just like standing. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> good job, Jacob. It's like a T Rex. You can't see yeah. him if he's, unless he's moving. Good job, Jacob. Uh, so then the final scene we're going to, of course, saving Daniel here. Sean then heads inside the the church building along with his mother, yeah. and Sean has to fight through the brainwashing the church has done to Daniel, along with the hard hitting white supremacist Nicholas. Which, by the way, I'm not chucking his white supremacist as a uh, side note. I forgot to mention. No, he's literally he's a white literally a white supremacist. You can find files on him that says he is literally yeah, a he's white supremacist. associated with white gang and, and all this sort like of that. stuff in his past. Yeah, that's a, as much as there isn't like a lot of exploration uh, exploration in this episode a lot of the yeah. files you do find help flesh out these characters to give you yeah. a better idea on how fucked up they are um even like the uh lydia or whatever the fucking name is um lisbeth sorry yeah, she, she, kicked she, out she was kicked out of a church, church and, and all this sort of shit they're all fucked up people they're all horrible and other reverends like pleading to her to like get help get and help and all this sort of stuff let people go to see doctors and stuff yeah like so it's like leader kicked from church fucked up asking to get help her right hand yeah. man is a white supremacist associated with a lot of white supremacist gangs yeah. and stuff you're like yeah these are bad people let's yeah. <laughs> but unless you oh, and she's trying to adopt Sean yeah and she, yeah the files where she's trying to which like, oh, do doesn't make any sense like how does that even get through government I don't know when there'd be like a big red flag yeah. on anything to do with it. I, did, I didn't understand that particularly, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm not an American, so I don't fully, yeah. maybe they're law. I don't know. Um, so then- You can just adopt these random children that you take in somehow. Apparently. Um, so then Nicholas tries to, Sh Sean tries to beg to Daniel to do, uh, to obviously come with him. And he's like, yeah. this is your mother. Uh, at first, Elizabeth is like, you can go speak to her. But then Daniel, uh, Daniel's like, I don't know her. I've never seen her before. All these sorts of yeah. things. Um, Sean then obviously keeps trying to move forward to to speak to uh, Daniel and I. So are they in there while the church is on fire? No, it's not this building. It's it's some other building off in the distance. Oh, okay. Right. I don't know exactly where it was. They they kind of okay, cut right. to a shot. You can you can see it off in the distance, but Nicholas runs off and he's like, "Oh my god!" So yeah, it's something. Yeah, but it's a big okay, tall building, right. not this one though. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry. Um. Yeah, it'd be awkward if the mum's like lit this building on fire. And Sean's like, we're trying to save him, not fucking like, get him killed. What are you doing? Um, yeah, so then you have to go for this this scene of kind of just Sean proving uh proving himself yeah. to, to Daniel, proving how much he, he likes. Basically, basically it's a test of willpower. How many not even that, but like how many secret files you manage to find because you bring it all up in the conversations. Like, yeah. oh, she got kicked out of her church and um the sister's sick and she's got pneumonia on the yeah, doctor. Yeah, but you don't have to click on any of these things. So I, because when mine was playing out and he's bringing up all these things, but he's just automatically yeah. saying them. So then I was wondering, like, if you don't find any of these files, then like, what does yeah. Sean say? Like, come, why? Yeah. They're bad. Church. Just cause. Just cause. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> like, at least I felt like I had, like when Sean's beating down, like getting punched in the face by Nicholas over and over yeah. again and getting back up. At least I had the facts every time to get back up and be like, she's doing this. She's doing this. Like yeah. every time and whatever yeah. else. But yeah. Um, I like the way this scene played out though. Obviously like uh, you've, you've probably, you've seen this sort of thing. Once again, yeah. you've seen this sort of thing play out a thousand times in different sorts of mediums and characters and events and stuff like that. But um, I think when done well, it's a sort of scene that, that can work. And he, he, here is Sean literally just getting nearly beaten to death. Uh, yeah. getting back up again over and over again fighting for his brother so and I, I think it does work like on the yeah. emotional level I feel like after they've put Sean through so much shit this episode this is like the kind of final test uh, for him I guess and that's kind of what the theme of this episode is even though it's called Faith it really should just be called let's test fucking Sean's willpower and yeah. his, like ability to <laughs> how, how much of a beating can Sean take how much take? of a beating can Sean take and this is the the, the fun finale of all that Um, and then uh, eventually, one way or another, there are a couple of different ways it plays out. Then, depending on characters' deaths and, and stuff, which we'll go over in a second. But one way or another, you are you do. However, you get there, you will end up with Daniel, of course, coming with you um, and heading out to uh, t to the car with you. And you all say goodbye to Jacob and his sister, yeah. and then uh, Sean, Daniel, and the uh, your mum all head off into distance. It doesn't matter. Did the church catch on fire for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So either way, though, they will head off on the distance. So the, the, yeah. the big difference here, decisions that can play out, are you shot Lisbeth while Daniel wasn't hurting her. You let Daniel unleash his power on Lisbeth while he was hurting her. You and Daniel both spared Lisbeth's life, 
or you shot Lisbeth while Daniel was hurting her. I, uh, I got Daniel's both, me and Daniel both share, uh, spared Lisbeth's life. Yeah, I don't even, I didn't even get any, op- another option other than the one I got. Yeah, I, I feel like this is one of those scenes where a lot of decisions in previous episodes, depending on how you yeah, shake like your whether Daniel. you restrain him or let him go. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. and I, 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 we'll talk briefly of course, in a moment where we think the final episode is going to go, but I feel like between this moment here and then obviously the last episode, I think is going to be a lot more about th- this sort of stuff. Like, how is Daniel? How have you shaped Daniel yeah. by this point? And if you've shaped Daniel to be a cold-blooded kind of killing machine by this point, then he probably just straight up fucking murders her and yeah. or, or whatever else. But uh, if you don't, then yeah, you get a yeah, uh, you can get everyone out safely somewhat. Uh, yeah, because the whole place, the whole place ca- caught on fire at some stage. But then she stands in front of the door, and then you, you're just like, "Move, um, threaten her." I, I told Daniel just to move out of the way, so then he like uses her yeah, powers. So I, and yeah. He shoves her out of the way, which I'm sure gave her a bruise. But at the end of the day, she's going to live, yeah. and then he's all just. Hop I away. thought they were going to leave him, leave him for dead and let him burn in there. No, well, that, yeah, well, there's, there's no there's no indication that they're not knocked out or anything like that. No, did you see in, in mine? They're outside. Oh, they are, yeah. I mean, at the end, they both walk out, but there's no indication when Daniel uses their powers on them that they're not fucking knocked out, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They just lay there for a while. Yeah, and then when you get to the scene outside, you can see them watching the church burn down and stuff like that. So, Which uh, they probably deserved to at least lose the church. Uh, Yeah, so that's how that all plays off, and they... I, I I enjoyed the way it ended. The you know I, I'm sure it might play out a little bit differently depending on how evil your Daniel is or whatever. But in, yeah. in mine, I kind of like the the brotherly loving shot of Sean's in the front there, just like I'm pretty fucked up. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm almost dead. I'm fucking. I need a doctor. <laughs> like, did you see how many hits uh, I just took? And then like Daniel reaches over from the back and like gives him a hug and whatever. I thought that was a nice nice uh, moment to end it on. In uh, so in when you're searching the house for the files and that, did you find Daniel's clothes in the father's blanket? No, I just found okay. his. I found his bracelet from Finn. Yeah, and like a picture he drew on the, something else, but I don't remember finding yeah. any of that stuff. No, right. <sighs> Why? What did you? What's it say when you? I oh, know nothing. I you just pick up the clothes in the blanket, which I imagine he goes back to wearing in the last episode. Oh, okay, but if yeah. you don't find them, I guess he's. They can just, outfit, I, I was going to say, they can just, like, you know there's probably going to be a time skip of, like, however long yeah. weeks or, oh, month yeah, or whatever the fuck it is. Um, It'll be, like, 20 years and the wall, Trump's <laughs> yeah. built the wall. Trump's built the wall. Uh, yeah, so let's 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 get into that. So the teaser for this one is, uh, it's simply short. Very short and very sweet. Very short and sweet. It just shows giant Mexican border, obviously, and you just hear Sean say, uh, this is it, we made it, Daniel. Um, Daniel then says, what do we do now? And then Sean says, we, uh, we make our way across and then it just shows the thing. And then Sean says, you ready? And then Daniel says, yeah, I think. And then cuts to black, very short, sweet. And that's, that's all it is. So yeah. Um, what, what do you gather from that? Where do you think we're going in the final episode? What do you want to happen in the final episode? What do you think it has to do to stick the landing in the final episode? Like, what do you, what do you reckon? I really have no idea. Like, at this point, I am at a loss of where it's going to go. Like, at least with Beyond the Storm and Life Strange 1, there was a clear, I guess, yeah. climax it was building towards and there was antagonists and, like, reoccurring characters where this one, it's literally only Daniel and Sean. Like, I'd, is it a confrontation with the government? Is it, like, I have literally no idea yeah. where it's going to go. I'm I'm somewhat the same. I'm like, I don't know how you solve it at this point. Like, if we- like there's no way they don't get to Mexico without some sort of problem, I guess. Yeah. I, I think they're going to get to Mexico. I don't think they're going to stay there. Is my thing. I guess, yeah. My, cause I don't know. I, 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 my, my thing like, do they get to Mexico and then get exonerated? Like, they go, oh, yeah. no, they weren't actually guilty. My thing with this whole season, as much as, like, it's somewhat about how fucked up the, like, America is at the moment, and, like, race and all these sorts of problems, I think having the season end with them going over there and living a happy ever after and then being like, you know what the solution to racism in America is? Just fucking leave. I feel like that's a very, yeah, like... Yeah, it, it doesn't... It shows the problems 
of America as it is, but it doesn't give you any sort of solution yes. to it. Yeah, so that's why I don't think they will stay there. I think... No. Like, maybe they never even cross it. You know, maybe that that's just like a red herring in this teaser here. Maybe yeah. they never actually do cross it. But they get shot by those red hicks in the water patrol. <laughs> maybe. Because they're trying to yeah. cross. Fuck, it's a possibility, you know. But yeah. I, I would say either they don't actually cross it and it's just like teased in this but never actually happens. Or if they do, then they end up coming back in some form or, form or fashion or another way. Now, there are several things. It's like, what happens to the mother at that point? I guess she's just going to... Yeah, like, did, did she stick around? Like, I feel like she's too important of a character just to disappear. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, going to be somewhat disappointed if they... Unless there's, like, a really good story reason for it. If they unless if they separate the family now, I'd be like, eh, you shouldn't... Nah, I don't really buy into this. Yeah. Um, and there's still a lot of other characters to suddenly wrap up in the, the final episode. So th- th- there's one character that none of us care about, but I know that there's always been choices to interact with, which is he's like BFF from school. Uh, yeah. Cassidy or whatever. Her name I, I, I Cassidy. Lydia think her name was. Yeah, Ka- oh, Lydia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like you can interact with her pretty much in nearly every episode at some point or another. If you I, choose I to. feel like this one of all of them was my chance to contact her, which I was kind of disappointed. I couldn't mm. because like, you were off the grid at this point and like none of stuff associated to your, I guess, accounts were yeah, yeah. traceable, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But it didn't let you. But yeah, in nah. every other episode I've chose not to because I've been trying to do the same yeah. thing. She's very underutilized. Yeah. So it's like you've got characters. Which I imagine would be even more disappointing for the people that did try and contact her at every point. Yes. 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 Because I um, I even remember like when I was reading some stuff um around a month ago or when no, probably like two months ago whenever we did the last episode right and i was yeah. reading some stuff there there was a whole pe- bunch of people that have really loved that character and have had a lot of yeah. lots of interactions with her and like oh, i wish we got more time to see this guy ca- these yeah. characters interact like well i've never interacted with her so it's quite funny to hear how you <laughs> love that character yeah. so much but i guess like i don't know how they do it without it being somewhat corny but like if if the theme of the whole show is like this road trip where you're bumping into so many different characters yeah. i wouldn't mind some sort of montage thing at the end to kind of show you like hey, here's how you've affected this character character and where they've ended up and yeah. like all this sort of stuff even going back to old mate who picked us up on Brody, Seth yeah. Rogen who picked us up on the road and uh, yeah. whatever else these sorts of things just kind of showing us everyone now my ultimate thing like I of course this is super fan servicey but I think that like I can't help it but they're building this universe with fucking super yeah. powered people in it and I, I'm going to say it's a very fucking... I'm putting it at like 1% because I, I highly doubt they'll do it, but I'm just going to chuck it out there again. I wouldn't be against them actually tying in the first game um, or the characters yeah. or mentioning some sort of bigger universe of <laughs> Super. I saw people. one thing someone wrote there that go... Um, Imagine they meet Max and they go, oh, I wish I could go back in time and just change Just rewinds everything. the whole fucking go, game. Yeah, rewinds it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like... Sean, Sean the, the, at some stage in this episode literally says I wish I could rewind time and I was like Whoop. yeah Whoop. <laughs> like do they go with like a whole misfits thing and like they encounter the CIA and the CIA, CIA has known about metahumans and stuff like that but I feel like that again is a bigger problem as well they're expanding beyond the scope of what it is I mean yes and no because they they could if if they want to introduce a bigger universe where like you start putting all these superpowered people together like the government's after them you could literally do a game where you have like a bunch of different characters on the run together from CI because they just want to fucking poke yeah. prod them but at the same time you could always do more games set prior to like 2017 or whenever and have yeah. them about different characters on the run or like dealing with their powers in a small town like season one and stuff. You can always rewind and go back to just telling small stories where you've got powers involved somewhat yeah. like they are. But at the same time, if you're going to continue to do games that are all set in the same universe and we know they're set in the same universe because this game, of course, in the first episode does show you, yep. depending on decisions Arcadia you made, Bay, that they are yeah. connected, right? And because the games are connected, it's hard not to wonder what the bigger fucking picture is here. And in, in my yeah. game, Max is alive. I let the fucking town be destroyed. So Max is... Chloe, yeah. Uh, Chloe, yeah. We're out there somewhere, right? Yeah. So you can't help but be like... Just give me... I haven't asked for it all game. It's yeah. the last episode. 
give me a tiny bit of fan service. After credit scene, I'll take even, you know? Yeah. Finish, wrap up the plot with Sean and Daniel because that is the most important thing at the moment for, for the, the season as a whole to be looked back upon as a, a decent story. Wrap up that. After credit scene, tease me the connected universe type thing. I, I, mm. I don't think it's a bad direction to take. Seven old Jackson shows up and goes, I've been looking yeah, for you. Yeah, something like that. Well, honestly, I mean, connected universes are all the fucking shit at the moment. It's yeah. like, it's, it wouldn't be a bad idea. They would get heaps of good press from it. You know I, they I fucking guess, would. Yeah. They're definitely working towards something. Otherwise, they wouldn't have set this one in the same Yeah, because that's my thing. Like, if you're not going to bother doing anything with it, then don't set them in the same universe. Yeah. And they've been teasing they're all connected since they dropped... Uh, yeah. Because you could very easily do this story without the superpowers as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's like, why do it? Well, they're like, oh, but it's Life is Strange. Well, no one said you had to do Life is Strange too. Like you could have just made a, a no, different game, called it something else and said from the people that brought you Life is Strange is here's another yeah. game. Like, but it's Life is Strange is now like it's, p- property, it's yeah. a property with, it's about teenage characters who have superpowers. That's mm. the, that's the thing. Um, yes, it deals with, bigger like themes and whatever else under that but like they're teenage characters with superpowers anyway yeah so other than that i have no oh, fucking idea where it goes side note how did i don't understand why they're after sean and daniel as murderers cop murderers when they would have done an autopsy and they've got the dash cam footage how on earth do they think that sean know. fucking blew the cop 20 feet across the street and blew all the cars over under their idea. tops yeah. <laughs> That's that's the thing that yeah that, that that's the thing that does still confuse me. She's like, well, you know, he's like, I did. Sean's like, I didn't do it to the FBI officer or what, whatever. And she's like, yeah, but it's like, fucking lady, have you seen the footage? Like the car literally goes. <laughs> Which I guess may lead credence to the fact that the government might know about it. Yeah, well, I find it hard to believe they're, they're going to introduce that FBI character and not have it come back. Like she was in it for oh, two yeah, seconds. Of course. There's no way she yeah. doesn't show up in the last episode. No way, especially when. You get her card her, from the car. You get her card in your inventory. Yes. So th- I imagine there'll be a point in the next episode when you have no choice but to contact them or something. Yes. That would that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, so anyway, uh that's it for this episode. Of course, the episode five, the f- final episode, which as far as I'm aware doesn't have a name yet, um, unless I'm wrong. But no, I believe it's out in December. It's out in December, but whatever it's called, the end. The road, the yep. wall, the wall. That would be a good name. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad name for it. Uh, episode five, the wall will be out in December. So you can look for, uh, well, hold on. If it releases on like December 20th, probably most likely yeah, look mid-December. for- Mid-December, mid mid-January. Mid it'll probably be January. Let's be honest at that stage. If it releases early December, then look, I uh, presume we'd probably be able to do it. Yeah. Um, anything's possible. Anything's a possibility. But either way, look for our thoughts on the final episode, of course. Uh, we're hopefully we're like, oh my God, they tied it all in together. But <laughs> who knows how it all works out. Um, of course, you can watch this show either on youtube.com slash explosion network or you can listen to it if you'd rather do that. However you're doing it. There are options. There are ways to watch it with our faces. There are ways to listen to it with just our voices. All of those options can be found on explosion network.com where you can find other video game podcasts, including RK Couch and other news reviews and exciting things. You can follow me on Twitter at VivaLDil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. You can follow Nick on Twitter. In cooking Instagram, I don't know what. What do you What do you pimp? What do you pimp? Um, tracked, I guess. In <laughs> my Instagram. <laughs> What's your cooking Instagram? I can't remember the name. Uh, Skull and Bones Barbecue. Skull and Bones Barbecue. Follow Nick on the Instagram at Skull and Bones Barbecue. We can see his uh, pictures where he's like, "I made this burger. It looks good." And then you feel hungry because that's how it works for me. <laughs> um, means it's doing its job, I guess. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Bye. Later.